Hello, welcome back to the show, Miss Beautiful Amanda. Hi, Kelly. Good to see you. And you are beautiful as well. <laughs> Aw, thank you so much. Yeah, it's good to see you. I missed you. I missed you too. So, it's been a little <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it has. Um, we were just talking right before I hit record about how it's too bad we don't come with a book, right? <laughs> so that we don't have to go through all these trials and tribulations and ups and downs and roller coaster of life that we know. And you said the most perfect analogy. So please, would you reiterate what you just said? Yes. So I was, I was, a, I was a pretty big gamer, I guess you'd say. <laughs> the beginning days of gamers. Um, I was an Atari, but I was Nintendo and um, Zelda. Zelda was my game. It was my jam. That was my thing. <laughs> and I remember begging my my dad for a uh, the cheater book, right? So that I could get all the the cheats. I was like the big thing back then is like you could get these this this book. You'd buy the game, and then it would give you the codes and stuff how to get and pass all the levels and then what we were just talking about was that if we did that I I mean yeah it was fun I was so excited yes I kicked butt then all my other friends were like you know still trying to do their thing with the, with the Zelda right Legends of Zelda and they were trying to pass the levels and I had already passed it but I was bored I was literally like bored after that. Um, and so if you right. want to, if you want to take on from that, Kelly. So if, if we had the cheat code book at the beginning of life and we could just cheat our way through all of the trials and tribulations, no heartache, no betrayals, no narcissists, no bullshit, no bullies, no nothing. Just skip right on ahead, pass all the levels. And hit the sweet spot at the end. Then what? We would be bored, right? I mean, can you imagine all of us sitting around with our big palm tree fans and our big old drinks that somebody's holding for us? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> and we're just laying around but being a bunch of lazies. <laughs> like, we're not living life, you know? So it would be boring. It would be absolutely boring if we didn't have all these colorful things that happen yeah some of them are ugly colors but we wouldn't know the beautiful colors if we didn't see the ugly ones so yeah we would be bored in life and I love that analogy a lot of times <clears throat> excuse me um I'll use the analogy that life is like driving a car because if you're a really good driver then you know how to watch all the other traffic going on around you you know, you know when to bob, when to weave, when to slow down, when to speed up, when to turn, how, how soon to slow down before you go through a curve, all those things, right? We master driving if we're a good driver. Now, if you're not a good driver, then you're probably not very good at life either. You're having lots of accidents. You're having lots of, you know, little dingers and, and dents and bumps put in your vehicle. There's lots of wear and tear on your vehicle. Right, because you got to keep the maintenance up on it. So, driving a car, even you know, playing video games, driving a car—it's a lot like life. We have to be a good driver in order to know when to bob and weave, <laughs> or <laughs> you know, and, and in the game, you know, you you know, you got to be able to level up, right? You got to achieve all of your obstacle courses to go over, regardless of what kind of game it is. There's always kind of some type of obstacles to go through that challenge you. And, you know, when we don't use the cheat code book to where we can get ahead real fast and then we're bored and we actually go through all those steps, every level that we go up, we feel so proud of ourselves for it. We're like, yeah, we did that shit. I just nailed that one, you know? So it's an awesome feeling to achieve those things. And I, I think that's part of the beauty of life too, because yeah, some things definitely suck. I am not going to sit here and sugarcoat nothing. Some some stuff that happens in life sucks. Absolutely sucks. 
But then there's other things that, and maybe even some of the things that suck. We can look back on them in hindsight when we have that 2020 vision and we can go, oh, okay, I see now why I had to do that. And I see now why I needed to experience this or witness this. Like it wasn't personally happening to me, but it was happening to someone that's personal to me and, and being able to relate to that. And that's a huge, that's a huge level up in my opinion, to be able to just realize that, don't you think? Oh, a hundred percent. Well, and I sit back and to and also try to remember as like, if you're, if we're going to use the analogy of this video game, right. And there's a perfect book. It's Michael Tibbalt's, uh, it's a holographic universe. So it's an amazing book. I suggest that for, for reading. Yes. Uh, and that explains very much what we're talking about, right? But the simulation of, of, of life. Um, but when, when we're doing that, right? And we're, we're saying that these, it, this is a video game and that this is like you are going through levels. Well, okay, so I cheated. Yeah. Not only did I cheat like on the video game to win, but I missed all of the lessons <laughs> that each level was trying to give me to be able to pass another, pass the other levels, right? right? That were going to give me later in life, uh, these lessons that I need right. to learn how to write. So you're, you're taking these aspects and you're putting it in life and it's a hundred percent true. So if you're cheating, well, you're cheating yourself, right? So even, even, I, I even like, yeah. say, like if you go for a healing session and we'll just say like, we we'll use what, what I, that I do, right. That hypnotherapy right okay let's say there's a non-believer out there it's okay it's, that's why we that's why the world works we've got non-believers and believers it's a balance um yeah if the person that's a non-believer that sits with me and we're both we're both we're repelling each other because we're not going to work with each other because i believe they don't right so we're it's yeah. it's not going to work out yeah therefore it's kind of, again, like, I guess maybe that's not the best analogy. It's just saying like if you were to sit here and pretend like you're actually doing it. And I'm putting my all into it yeah. for you, right? Then you're kind of cheating yourself on the healing that you would receive. You know, it, it just, I guess mm -hmm. you're just not ready to receive, right? I mean, that's what it comes right. down to. That's a lesson, right? But then again, right. this is all, all, these are all lessons. Like, I know you and I are very good at that and going through life and when obstacles hit us, right? We sit back and go, I wonder what the lesson was for that. <laughs> so, so that I may not, yeah. keep, again, I, I really don't, I don't, yeah. I don't I'm learning that. That's that's one of my greatest lessons of all is to learn to not repeat lessons to learn them again. <laughs> right. <laughs> that has been. That yeah. Is, ooh, Amanda, we'll be 46 years uh, old next month, right? And for me, that's um, that's one of my greatest lessons of that and the judging. I'm still still working on that. All of that, the judging. Because when yeah. I'm judging, guess what? I'm just judging. Yeah, those are... Right. That's right. Yeah. But you're, I mean, you're doing great. You're doing great. I've watched you grow and blossom so much in the past two years of being your friend. And you're just, I mean, you were beautiful when I met you and you're even more beautiful now. Your soul is just radiating. You're doing great. Thank you. Yeah. That Absolutely. That Thank you lesson. for the privilege. <laughs> that was the other lesson too. It was taking compliments. Oh yeah. That's a hard one. That's a hard one. Cause that goes with that self-love and we're not taught self-love. We're, we're not even taught that it's okay to feel like you need to, to love yourself. You know, nobody says it's okay to love yourself. They say, how dare you? You need to be loving others. So comp taking a compliment comes with that. 
and it, it's hard. Yeah. It's, it was hard for me, you know, it's and I was, trust me. Sorry. It, it's a compliment to the other person. I want to no. say, right? Because that other person went out on a limb to give you a compliment, which shows what's, yes. their, what's going yes. on. Yes, their compassion. Their inner self of love too, right? They're radiating yeah. and it's showing yeah. 100% that they're, that they love themselves enough that they can show to give you love. And for you to deny that yes. is messing with their self-love, I guess is kind of like a little bit, I want to, you, you know, yes. it is. you're messing with it a little bit. So you're like, well, you're like repelling the, the, the love that they sent frequency wise to you, you know, you just exactly. Exactly. You just put up a shield to light and love. Yes. And and what you just described, that that inner understanding that you're sharing with that other person that gave you the compliment that you can accept graciously and, and do that exchange with, that's like the true form of what namaste is. Did you see that? I, see <gasps> that. I, I was like... Wait, what was that? I'm like, there wasn't anything going on. That's the angel. But we're talking about ah. it. <laughs> so there's there's validation right there to show you. Yeah. The yep. love. Like that that made me yeah. look almost kind of emotional. <laughs> you know? <'cause> yeah. That's, <laughs> oh, that's just so beautiful. That's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I hope I hope everybody gets to see. Oh, I did it again. <laughs> wow. So yeah. I yeah. Mean, We've been pretty connected since I got grounded from YouTube for a week. <laughs> the angels are ever present for the past <laughs> week. And I've been getting lots of downloads. I mean, like, oh my gosh, I'm getting ready to do. Um, a video, actually, I think I might, did I send that to you? My 13 pages that I wrote in my channeling the other night? No, no. Did I send you pictures of that? I meant to. I've been so crazy busy trying to sell mom's house and stuff. But um, yeah, I got 13 pages of like 50 very important, important points to know for sure you're a light worker, a star child, an, an earth angel, a volunteer, whatever word you want to put on it, right? 50 points, 50, five, zero, 13 pages I, I channeled and downloaded. And every once in a while, like my own consciousness would pop in and start to question something. And very loudly, Uriel would say, you'll understand when I'm finished, just keep writing. <laughs> and I'm Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm just writing along, you know, like automatic writing. <laughs> and um, at the end of it, I'm like, well, wait a minute. I think there were a few of those things that you actually like repeated yourself on. And again, in his very bold voice, he says to me, yes, but that's because there's multiple layers of lessons to learn in something. So they need to be mentioned twice. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, sir. <laughs> I'm going to keep writing. <laughs> And it made sense when I, yeah, and when, when I, when I went back over and rewrite it, I was like, oh, that makes sense actually to why we would need to. And that was another thing when, when I was reading it back, I was like, it's like this whole thing was written for all of the experiences I've went through in life, in this life. And again, very loudly, he popped in and he said, that's what everyone is going to think when they read this. And that's why I worded it that way. Because we are all supposed to relate to it the same way. And I was like, well, that's brilliant. And he said, I know. <laughs> that's, so it's a very. Um, He's a hoot. It's an easy explanation. then, Right. That's kind of what I got out of it. it was a yeah. Very easy explanation, um, to get everybody on. Yeah. And, and very relatable. Yeah. The way it's worded. Very very relatable yeah yeah it was really cool so yeah they've been 
they've been really active and I've been really busy <laughs> channeling and uh, automatic writing and, you know, sitting in meditation, getting downloads. And oh my gosh, it's just been, not to mention my regular life busy has amped up <laughs> with the business and, you know, yeah. selling my mom's house and all these things. So I've really, really been busy. But uh, ironically, I'm like supercharged. I'm not tired. I've well, just been supercharged. I, I want to say, I think we were both um, running on fumes for a little while. Um, like a couple months. Oh, ago, we were running. Yeah. On, right. And then. Yeah. And then the energy like shifted, shifted. And then the blue moon. Remember? <laughs> We had the blue moon. Yeah. And that was big. We were talking about that too, which I totally believe that there was a lot of separation going on to elevate people. Yes. Right. In the life. Um, yeah. And then from there, like, I think that we've all been really well on, um, executing the, the the ideas and being really strong on our mission we've been on our mission for a long time right and you know there's things that can happen to distract you but you still work on it at least a couple times a month it doesn't matter it's not like you just gave up on it right so I've, i yeah. feel that now um we've gotten some big stuff out of the way and now the stuff that we were mm -hmm. kind of working on a little bit throughout the, you know, on the month, throughout the months. Now, now that's the one that's going to come in priority, right? That's one that's starting to like going to come in yeah. high gear and it's our, and it's our ideas. It's our manifestation. And what, what is really Kelly, what is really, where do we, manifest from from our heart you and I, we, we do that we, we that's why we're becoming very successful um because we we, yeah. we manifest from our heart and we work from our heart we decide from our heart we <laughs> they go play go all of it yeah right that's exactly right it's from our heart so i don't know people uh, yeah they want to understand or understand uh this beautiful universe that we do live in and i love robert edward grant says universe like you in verse like you in the verse right uh oh that's nice i like it yes yeah, so you're creating your if you break the word down, you're in the verse, right? You are in the universe. So yes, um, and like yes. I feed them or something, and, right? yeah. and your verse—that's your words, your spell casting. That is your creation of your world, your little world. Yeah, yeah. I love that. I love play on words. Yeah, the kingdom and queendom. <laughs> and you have the each whatever. But that's what that's what is all about is like building that building. I don't think the word empire is a bad thing if you're doing it in the right way. No, I don't either. You know? Um, yeah. It's, that's what I'm what I'm would like to do. I desire to do. Yeah. To build that. But there's. It's I'm sorry. We're not just sitting on our butt, though, either. We're like we're grinding. We're working hard. No, I'm we're yeah, hard. we're humping it. Yeah, but I did work my butt off a little too hard last weekend, and you were working pretty hard too, a couple of weekends too, and so what happened, we got yep. run down a little bit, but we do take really good care yep. of ourselves. Yep, lowered, so we could have been lowers really the immune sick. system. Yes, <laughs> we could have been really sick though, but with yeah. the stuff that we take and everything and and the things that we choose. Right. And, our rituals and things that we do, right? Um, our prayers and whatever. Yeah. Yeah. That is a key to 
I, I blow people away a lot when they see me in person and say, you're seriously like in your late 40s? Like, yeah. Like, what do you do? I'm like, well, thank you to genetics from my from my family, right? <laughs> thank you for those genetics. Right. Um, I was blessed with very good genetics. But the other thing is, mm-hmm. I swear, the more that you work on yourself, Right? You take that time to sit with yourself, take those lessons that we're talking about, not skip and get the cheap book right in life. Um, right, and, right. And, it's about that true inner self-love. I mean, just like when a woman is pregnant, she glows. Well, she's glowing because she's loving what's inside of her body growing. Yes. So, you know, love what's inside of you. Just focus say, on those things i i heard some and we've talked about this before but there was somebody and they i've heard this before i, mean, I, I can't remember who, who exactly said this but don't wait to love yourself or love that part of yourself when, when you get it you need to love yourself before you have you, you know yeah I mean? you flaws and all yeah, I mean, if, if you have, like, people don't know, I have extensions in my hair because I have very thin hair, and I'm growing it out, and in the meanwhile, in between that time, I'm, you know, I've got the hair to help me out with my self-confidence. There's nothing wrong with it. Right. I could embrace no. the, the hair that I have, but I was a sick girl, and I lost a lot of hair, and so this is my chance to have the hair that I always wanted to have. So whatever. It is what it is. And that's my and favorite. to build your self-esteem. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I'm working on. And that whatever. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I was just saying I'm working on now breaking down to find out like the actual polypeptide that I'm missing. That I, when I had my surgery. <laughs> that it got removed and that's one of the reasons why I cannot produce the hair because of this polypeptide that I'm lacking. So I'm, I'm getting ready to talk with this beautiful lady named Joni um, Heinish and uh, we're going to sit down and do some blood work. And then this is another thing. Be very honest, right? Be very honest Mm -hmm. about so that I can get the correct polypeptide for me. And what's going on because my stomach enzymes, some of them, right? People don't know, but I had a major hysterectomy surgery when I was 38. And so I had all of my female organs removed. And so therefore it really messed my hormones up. They're finally on track. But in the meanwhile, mm-hmm. I lost my hair one and it just, it's just gone. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter with what vitamins I take, whatever, it's just gone. But this is another avenue that I get to look at. And these are all the things like that PRP we talk about too, very safe, right? Using your own blood. I, there's just these beautiful things that we can do naturally, but also help us to keep us youthful, keep us, right. when you're not in pain, then you don't look sure. as old. You do yes. age when you're in and I'm going to and I'm going to take this opportunity to plug my new product line that's in my store because I'm getting ready to send you some samples yeah. and the um, hair and facial elixir that I have it not just fixes um, frizzy or split ends on hair but it promotes natural hair growth and it has all natural essential oils in it. It's very safe. And I can't wait for you to try this on your hair because I know you're going to see a huge difference. I don't know if you can notice. I've been my own guinea pig. And you remember how frizzy my hair was looking there for a while? Yeah. And I didn't even actually, I didn't even put it on today after I took a shower, but usually I do put it on. But I have the oil for my for myself. And I've been putting the little salves in these little jars and I've got cute little labels for them and everything now. But um, yeah, I've got elixirs and tinctures and salves for literally everything you could think of, whether it's puffy, dark circles under your eyes, dry skin, acne, eczema, psoriasis, neuropathy, 
um, diabetic circulation issues, like I've got a salve or a tincture or something for all of it. It's in the store. <laughs> <laughs> and then things, though. like so when yeah. people are asking right I, I mean this is this is this is where you sit down and do your research right and you just go hmm right I, I think this is good for me we were just talking about how your your stuff is based with um coconut oil right? yeah that's the and it's the cooking yeah you cook with it, whatever that's one of my favorite stuff too yeah. that I use. Um, right. I also, I also. Yeah. And coconut oil oh, or almond oil. I also use almond oil as a base, but like you were saying earlier, you're allergic to almonds. Yours would be the coconut oil line, but I, I can do either one depending on their preference. Cause some people are allergic to coconut too. Yes. And the biggest thing, too, is I've been <coughs> drinking more water, too. I've been drinking more water. I have, too. Oh, my goodness. Me, too. Have you felt dehydrated? I like, even though felt. you're drinking water? <sighs> Me, too. And it's really at nighttime, too. At night, I seem to be yes. very parched. <laughs> like, I'm all... Yes. I'm just going through. I, I go through a full one before I even go to bed and then I've got to fill this one back up. And this is 24 ounces of water. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, and then I have to get up and use the restroom. And this one I was going to tell you too. I didn't get to send you the, the videos, but um, I know um, you're a big sky watcher. I'm a big sky watcher. And I was up at like four this morning. Uh, and I was I'm yeah. just staring out my bathroom window and I have half of it where it's like covered in, um, oh, it looks like it's stained glass. So can't see on that part, but the other part I wouldn't do so that I can always yeah. do my sky watching. <laughs> so it wouldn't disturb that. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm up there at four and I was like, man, the star is just, it's not a star, right? It's not, it's not a star. And it looks like it's moving. I love how Jake described it. He's like, it looks like it's in water. The way it moves. It's like. Real fluid. Yeah. The, the, yeah. It just moves like it's in water. Like it's a reflection. Right. It's it's really beautiful. Yeah. But then. But then you think it was plasma? Well, so what's what's crazy is it gets. It has um, where you can see it's a ship, right? You can you can see the connectors coming off of it, and the way that it would move around like the around the ship, but it's got the base of it, and then slowly, if you or if you're watching the video, you can see the way it like is moving around the propulsion around it. It's fascinating. It's absolutely fascinating. I'll have to send it to you, um, not on my text because. It's just too long, but um, I just I don't know. I'm always just fascinated. Yeah, I would love to see it. <laughs> when I get up early in the morning, I'm just like my mouth is open. I'm just staring straight up. Yeah, the sky and um, and you know what's crazy is it doesn't it doesn't look like a star. It looks like a lightning bolt. I don't know how to describe it. It looks like a lightning bolt, but like all like moving. I'm like, oh, that's, that's, and then I had a couple of uh, still ones that I did in a night, in a nightscape on my phone. And the nightscape, you can see beautiful, like the galaxy, like all the, you can see it all set up. Um, like the big dipper, the little dipper, you can see all of it. And then nice. the one right before it, though, you could see this, they're all like lines. It's, I, I don't know. I'll have to have you check it out. But that's pretty been, cool. I've been, <laughs> you know, I've been taking pictures at night for a really long time. And then we ended up getting a telescope yeah. 
the telescope wasn't the best for me to look through a window. So we had to give it back. So I'm, I'm, I'm now would like to purchase one that I get to look through the window again, because it's going to get cold and I don't want to stand outside. Yeah. Through a, a telescope. It's just no, no bueno, but I, but I'm near Air Force. Yeah, me Park. neither. No bueno. Yeah. But you heard me, right? I'm I'm near Air Force Base, Buckley Base, so I I see. Yeah. See some stuff. <laughs> see some stuff, and so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, right. Like that one that I have on my TikTok, it's got, it's at the bathroom window again, and it's a, a spaceship go to eleven seconds, from one side of the the sky to the other way side of the sky a bird nothing drone nothing like that. oh wow seconds that fast across yeah yeah no way no there's just it was I, totally a ufo yes you gotta you gotta like sky watch look up at night yeah just, just start gazing taking some pictures It's very. Um, yep, I take pictures all the time. It's soothing too to like stare at the stars. It really is. Mm -hmm. It really is. It's soothing. My my cat too is so funny. She'll look at me, and she'll like get up on the window, and try to see what I'm looking at. <laughs> it's like, what are you looking at, mom? Like it's stars. Stars Stanley's like that too. <laughs> yeah. Right? Oh, no, he totally I'm doesn't sorry. get it when he hears an airplane. Oh, really? Like he cannot understand airplanes going over. Yeah. He'll look out the window and he'll look around and then he'll look at me like, what the hell? <laughs> he just can't get it. <laughs> she saw her first jet and I thought she was going to jet out of her harness like right freaked out and now i mean can you imagine yeah i can't imagine i mean i can't they'd be like what kind of sorcery is this <laughs> <laughs> what the heck yeah. Um, yeah no thank you i mean she just saw the fireplace for the first time we we just turned it on yesterday. Yeah. Or, yeah. The other day. And uh, she was walking up to it. Staring at it. All crazy. And I was like, Athena, that's the fireplace. Like, <laughs> but it's fascinating because she's yeah. a year old. And so she she's never seen a fireplace. We didn't have it on, I guess, last year. So right. she was, she, what the heck is this? Animals are, I don't know, they're the best. They really are. They are. Animals and plants. They're fascinating to watch. <laughs> My plants. Mm -hmm. I, I got to go plant shopping. I said, yeah. Shopping. And <coughs> my husband says, <coughs> says, Amanda, we have the most orphan plants ever. I have so many orphan like today I brought home a cactus. It was like five cactuses in one pot, but it was ten dollars. I think it was less than that. And it was dried up and it was they were like six of them calling to me, but I I could only get one guy. So I'm sorry. So I grabbed that one and brought it home and got him uh Nice right. and hydrated, and it's downstairs doing good. He'll come up here to my it's a cactus and succulent, so it has to be up here. But, um, yeah, man, <laughs> people people rescue all kinds of things. I rescue plants, and I'm running out of room. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm out of room. <laughs> I know. I took a bunch of mine out to my deck this spring after the frost danger frost was over and they've been out there all summer 
And I've actually gained like 10 more plants since then. So I was just looking around at them yesterday going, oh my God, where am I going to put all these? I got to bring them in soon. <laughs> and I have no room. I already have plants everywhere in here. <laughs> I mean, even my so windowsill behind my curtain is full of plants. And, uh, They're everywhere. It's, it's where you just... They're everywhere. And I started bringing them to the gym too. So if you're going to bring more plants, it's like, oh yeah. I'm gonna make this place a jungle in here. Like this is gonna be, this is gonna be a jungle. <laughs> Why not? These you can grow something like. Why not? Store, you know, with a tree. So I'm gonna take advantage of it. Uh, Why not? Hey, yeah. I mean, the name of your place is Genesis. Right. You should have plants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're gonna be calling me like Jane of the Jungle. <laughs> <laughs> right um, oh, you fit yeah. the part I do I do sometimes feel like I'm you do juggling with that at, at the gym sometimes <laughs> a lot going on at times so I feel very good at right my, man that bargaining skills came really in handy in hand like to do this job at multitasking you know right like i got this little kid ruben i just right. him to death, but he'll be talking to me and i have somebody else trying to get gloves i have somebody else trying to do sign a waiver somebody else that was was just saying hello right and you're just trying to and i know a lot of people do all jobs like that and it's yeah. the best it's the best it's so yeah gratifying i guess i want to say is like at the end of the day, when you, when you're like, everybody's taken care of, everybody was taken care of with love too. <laughs> and I don't know, everybody feels yep. good and, you know, it was a good day. Yeah. Makes you feel like your day was, was worthwhile. Yeah. A hundred percent. I agree. Yeah. I love some service to others. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's where it's all at. But if we don't have that self-love, we don't know how to be our best self for service to others. We don't. And, I, I, you know, I'm going to circle back around to where we started at the beginning of this show because we're not taught self-love. And that's a hard, hard lesson to learn. And it's more than one lesson because it's multi-layered. It's multifaceted what it means to love yourself. And, um, God, I just want that so bad for everybody. You know, I want everybody to just love their self because that really would change the whole world. Don't you think? If everybody just genuinely, like, like no ego, not that ego bullshit, right. that pompous kind of love. No. But I think it would change the whole flipping world. I wish in a way it would, that would be very, it'd be like the office, the show, the office, but to show a documentary of myself from when I was, um, we'll say like 14 to now to, to okay. show to show people the ups and downs that I went through to be the woman that I am today and to love her for everything that I right. went through too and to work on that consistently right. on a daily basis that's what I was going to say earlier too is that I love myself so much that I that I'm like yeah I I am working out yeah i might be skinny and whatever but i'm just so what you can still be skinny and unhealthy you, you know so i i'm decided yeah. that i wanted to work out and i'm adding that to my routine now there's just there's just stuff that i personally need to you're work doing myself. Yes, amazing else you is gonna do it so good you, you know so mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Right. And, you know, yeah. you're, you, you bring up a good point there, actually, because people who turn to us for help or guidance or friendship or whatever else, you know, whatever, whatever it is that they're looking at us for, they look at you or they look at me and they may think one way or another about us, you know, and then we say the things we say about 
how it's important to have self-love and how this could really change your life and bring you so many more blessings in life and blah, blah, blah. And they're like, yeah, but, and it's like, they don't understand that we, we were just like them on all levels. Any, any person that we come in contact with is relatable stories because we've experienced life. We've really experienced some life. And we've went through a lot of lessons and, a, and some of them more than, you know, once, twice or three times even, <laughs> but you know, we made it, like we, we made it this far. But when we say experience, I mean, I, I made the experience myself. So the times that I was like the dark yes. times that I had the times that I was like getting upset with myself and unloving, unlike love, for sure, to myself. <laughs> the, the bitching, the moaning, the frustration, all of that. Right, right, I, yeah. I, I, I mean, I took those lessons, and I really learned from them, and it was like, this is, this is enough. It's, it's, it's enough. It's enough. It's time to, like, like, well, how do, instead of doing all this nasty stuff, turn it around and reverse it and like give myself the love instead now and that is now yeah made me calmer I get ready faster um it used to take me hours to get ready now it just takes me you know right forever not not like hours anymore um because I because the more that I sit <laughs> I, I judge <laughs> right it's what happens yeah <laughs> you gotta yeah get, get out of your head right so you know i i honestly do not even look in the mirror other than for maybe 10 minutes in a whole day and that's when i'm getting ready like i go brush my teeth wash my face throw on a little bit of makeup brush my hair and i'm done i'm i don't even go back to the mirror again ever in my day i just don't and for me, that was part of, I guess, my, my lesson for myself, because even though I've never been a vain person, because I've always been what people call pretty, they always thought I was vain. And so for me, I had to prove it to myself after a while, just like anything else that after you hear it over and over and over again, you start to question it in yourself. You start to maybe even believe it about yourself. And so I started second guessing a lot of who I was because I was allowing other people to tell me how to feel about me. And yeah. I had to teach myself, prove it to myself that I'm not vain and that I can still look decent. You know, <laughs> I don't want to go out looking like a hot mess. Right. I mean, my mama taught me better than that. Don't step out your side. And like some people go to Walmart in their pajamas, and their house slippers and their hair's a mess. And I'm just like, <sighs> My mother, my mother, God love her. She, she taught us very strict dignity about things like that. You know, you get up and you get dressed before you go to the breakfast table. Even she wouldn't even let us go to the table without clothes, full of clothes, you know, no pajamas at the breakfast table. Now I'm more leisure than that here, but I mean, she taught us very early on, right. To well, think highly of ourselves in that manner. Yes. Right, you do want to have a cleanliness. <clears throat> yeah. That's. Yeah. So I mean, I've always been taught some level of self-respect in that sense, but then when it came to like the self-love part, you know, nobody taught you that. Nobody really teaches that hmm. until now. But we all have our things that we have to do to prove to ourselves that we are who we believe we are. You know, we're all guilty of that if that's the word that we should even use because I don't think that we should feel guilty for it really I think that all of that is so opposite and backwards from where we really should be and that we should honor that in us we should if it's a weakness honor it nurture it love it don't hate it don't dismiss it don't be embarrassed there, or ashamed about it there. honor it it's there to show you reflection of like yes work on this and then it will go away 
It would literally go yeah. away to work on it because when, why are you, how are you going to work on something when there's nothing to work on? <laughs> right. Right. And there could be plenty to work on and you just don't realize it because you're not even looking at the, you don't want to look at the bad things in you. And so if you don't want to look at the bad things, then you certainly don't really want to look at the good things either. And you're, it's just self-sabotage. It is. Yeah. It is. And it's, an, it's kind it's of a sad like, thing. Well, it's like enough of it already. Right? Enough of it already. I mean, we get it all over the TV. You get it all over wherever you go. There's like, put this in your body. Yeah. Like, whatever. We could go on forever about all that. But. Yeah, look a certain way. Act a certain way. And we shouldn't be letting anybody tell us how to feel about ourselves. Yes. But if you could look in the mirror. Yeah. You know, I do. I, I do go into the, when I go into the bathroom, just I'm washing my hands and I look in the mirror and I try to remind myself, I love you. Or I'm proud of you. Or like if I'm. Yeah. Looking like a hot mess because I just am a really hot mess from cleaning and I'm hot right I'm like well you're a hot mess but right that's because you're cleaning and you're hot and it's hot out here right so just put your hair up go sit in front yeah. of your fan for a second <clears throat> cool down right collect yourself boom I, I'm telling because when you get when you get hot you get a little little pissy I think most people they get a little flustered when they yeah. get hot they get a little more uh, a little Short tempered, a little agitated, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. So, imagine mm -hmm. that, and then you're looking at yourself in the mirror. I'm sure you're probably not going to give yourself <laughs> the best love, right? Um, yeah, so right, you're not getting down. the best review from you at that moment. <laughs> <laughs> so, to calm down and take a few breaths and like cool down and then go back and go. All right, talk to yourself, or, you know, nicely. Mm -hmm. talk to yourself nicely. I don't know, gather yourself and then go back to whatever you're doing. But, um, because you could even be doing that. I've done that with Jake before. I, he went to go ask me a question and I started to get really, I was already hot. And then I was doing something else and I'm like, <sighs> and then I answer him all aggressively because I was, hot and I just needed to call sure. <laughs> and yeah mm -hmm. yeah I was telling I was telling my yeah. girlfriend I'm like man they're I don't know like not to be offended to when people are calling you out for really what you're what you're doing right then so this last weekend we had this big party yeah right for the gym and I was like running around with my head cut off like a chicken but I'm trying not to act like it and Jake said <laughs> I was stressed and I was like don't tell me I'm stressed don't tell me I'm stressed but really would be like Amanda why don't you go look at and he didn't say this, this is what I'm talking about myself but why don't you go look at your face? Because your face does not match what's going on inside. <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> if I say I'm not stressed, I better not look like, like I'm stressed. Yeah. <laughs> right? I better be like, everything's fine. It's all going great. Right. <laughs> then, then you can't call me out for being stressed. But I remember it was right. kind of show, And it's not the 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 idiot prime minister guy um in canada no the it's, author yeah it's a different guy yeah <laughs> he he said that there was a lady in his conference once and she said something about well i well i feel this way and he's like well that doesn't look like that matches your face you might want to tell your face to adjust to your <laughs> like how you feel <laughs> right and, you know match it so yeah Sometimes you can't fake it to make it. Yeah. yeah. You got to really like. Right. Down and yeah. No. 
<laughs> yeah. And it is good that you can have people to like call you out and put you back on point about some stuff. Um, like for me personally, I have low blood blood sugar issues. I have hypoglycemia. So if I don't eat every two or three hours, my blood sugar tanks. Well, when my blood sugar tanks, I get a little hangry. You know, I can get a little snippy if, if I let it go. And sometimes I'll get busy and I'll be working and I'll na not take time. Because that's like a whole lot for me to take a couple of minutes out of my day every two or three hours to put a little something in my face. So I don't always do it. But everybody that knows me knows that my disposition is usually so happy and bubbly and, you know, hyper and upbeat that when I get a little snippy, they're like, you need food here. <laughs> and like immediately people have food handed it to me here. You need food because they know that that's not typically me. So then they're like poking food at me. Yes. So yeah, we all need somebody to help watch out for us and, and, and put us back be, on point. <laughs> not to be, I've, I've tried <laughs> That's another lesson I'm learning is not to be so offensive, offended. Right. Be gracious. Are, yeah. Be gracious for it. When people are helping, right? They're, yeah. <clears throat> it, just like how I would be helping mm -hmm. someone else. I wouldn't want them to chop my head off. Yeah. <laughs> so. I, right. I'm respectful too. I've been, I've been really. Yeah. Because. Yeah. And we need each other. You know, we want to be helpers to other people and we want them to accept our help. Yes. So when someone reaches out and tries to help us, we should graciously accept theirs too. Kind of, kind of like those compliments. It's hard to take those compliments <laughs> and it's hard to accept help from other people when you're used to being the one, do it all yourself. You know, yeah. it's hard to pull back and let somebody help and give them a little, little bit of the control of it you know it's a tough lesson it is it's like learning to to let go of control of you having control yeah that's a that's a that's a exactly that i know a lot of women <laughs> that have a very yeah um, that's a it's a lesson that that is a repeated one i guess i'd say it's a repeated mm -hmm. one um yeah and i don't know if that's from being yeah. a mom right and then you just carry that over to i think it's kind of ingrained mm -hmm. something i think it's sort of ingrained and it's just because of our societal ways you know i mean men even men with certain things they need to have control over it because they were kind of programmed their whole life. This is what's expected of you, right? And women the same way. This is what's going to be expected of you. You have to be able to do, 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 multitask and juggle a bunch of shit so that he can go do this, right? Because we all have our role to play. And so somebody comes along and offers us some kind of help. Us as women, it's really hard for us to be like, yeah, okay, you can do that. Because we're like, nah, I think I could just, you know, I'd rather do it myself and do it my way. Yes. And we don't have enough hands and enough time in one day to do it, all of it our way. And so, like, I'm a completely different person from who I used to be and stuff like that. Because now I'm real laid back and easygoing. If somebody wants to help do something, I'm like, yeah, okay, you can go do that. And if they mess it up, they mess it up. Who cares? We'll redo it. You know, it's like, don't cry over spilled milk, right? It's not a big deal anymore. And it used to be a really, really big deal to me. I used to do that with Jules. I learned that lesson with folding clothes. I would let her fold clothes. And she's little. And obviously she's not going to yeah. do them perfect. <laughs> right? But yeah, it's the act of letting her help. And then I could go back and fix it if I need to. Yeah, It's not that big of a deal. Right? There's, there's certain right. things that but I guess that's the other part of the, the, that lesson part two is like learning. Is it a big deal, right? <laughs> is that a not? Like, do you really need to make a statement yeah. about, do you not? Right? Like, yeah. I don't know. There's yeah, it's kind of like that pick your battles 
pick your battles wisely kind of saying, right? Where I mean, like, why are so many things so very important to us to have control over when some of them really we could just let go of? And then just focus on the ones that really are that important. <laughs> if you need to still have control of those things, do that. Because I feel like... I mean, it's easier on you in the long run. You can breathe more. Well, yeah. And some of the tasks are so meaningless and it became so robotic that they are literally mm -hmm. draining time, energy, and resource and like money from you. Yeah. Because you're so caught up in that. But but why do you keep doing it and you're just getting the same result? <laughs> so it's like stop. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find a really good example of like getting up in the morning, cleaning up the house, and then coming home and then cleaning up the house and going to bed. Right? Like you're going to work and like right. and then coming home. Right. So there's this repeated pattern. And then by the end of the week, you're like exhausted. And I guess the house wouldn't be that clean to you because you've been cleaning it all week. So obviously it's not. Do you know what I'm saying? Like you, you, you like your house needs to be cleaned again, but you can't relax. You, you know, there's just like this yeah. pattern. So but what if you were to break that pattern? You're like, well, I'm just going to clean on like the Saturday or something, right? That one, once a week, I'll just clean on the Saturday for a few hours and tackle it all. And then those other days, instead, you're like, well, I wanted to read this book. So maybe you read the book on Monday. And then on Tuesday, you're like, well, you know, I've been wanting to paint. Maybe you put like an hour of paint together. But the problem is, yeah, a lot of us, we start a project and we can't put it down until we're done. Yeah. We, we, we break. But that's a, that's a self-discipline thing. A hundred percent. Yeah. Where we got to learn to do everything. Yeah. Everything needs to be done in moderation. Yeah. That's that control. Thing. Yeah. And that's the same thing we're talking about with self-love, but we'll fulfill these nonsense <laughs> projects till we are exhausted from the day and why oh we can't we can't do we i don't have time yeah. to do that well but if you if you looked at your time management a little bit better that's all i did that's all i did yeah how i'm how i'm a better amanda now because i because i took time management and i'm a busy ass lady but I decided to put myself in that schedule and still yeah. do whatever I want to do, still do, right? But right, I, I'm now I'm now not guilty. I don't feel guilty anymore when I talk to people about when they ask me certain things. Amanda, what do you do? Because I'm not lying at all, too. Because I'm really telling the truth. Because these are really things that I work on. But I put yeah. the time and effort into my life to work them out, though, too. You know, we can always say we never yeah. have enough time. Okay, well, then you'll never have enough time. There are 20. Yeah, you got to make time. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. come on now. Even working yep. two jobs, like, I work <laughs> two jobs and sometimes three. It's crazy. There's like all the, well, whatever, but I've learned the time management. Yeah. And it's something that I guess you really can't teach people. It's something they have to like learn for themselves. They can observe. Yeah. Right. I think, well, I think you can teach them. They just have to want to learn it for themselves. Like they have to really want to learn it. The will has to be there. You know, just like with you doing a regression therapy with someone who doesn't believe that they can be regressed. Well, they're probably not going to be regressed because they're fighting against you from the get go. Same thing with me and, you know, helping to do any kind of energy healing or working with the herbs with them. If they don't really have the desire to be better, to do better. They're just wasting my time and theirs, you know. 
But back to making time for ourselves, I just wanted to quickly say we make time because we're creators and we can manifest whatever we want. If there's a will, we always find a way. Yes. Great. I mean, we can Do you create. have any um, parting words before we? Well, you can finish saying what you were saying about creating too. Well, uh, creating, I just remember we are a version of the creator. So if we are a version of the creator, then we can create anything. We can create chaos or we can create blissfulness. <laughs> um, it's, it's whatever we want to create, we will create. But I guess... I would say that yep. happiness is the state of being happy. <laughs> mm -hmm. right? It's just the state of being happy. So, yes. And, and, and if, if you can, I guess you could put that for love. Love is a state <laughs> of being in love with thyself. Yeah with others and then I hope that um, you know this is just a conversation that Kelly and I are having and I hope that it touches somebody deep down inside that they can um, relate and have fun with us with the conversation and I know I look forward to having another one with you and always I don't know, just keeping that balance, right? The balance. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Thank you very much for our beautiful talk. I love talking to you. We always have such good conversations. We do. We do. I look forward to the other one, to our next one. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Definitely. And until then, everyone, be well and be blessed in love and light.